What up? Well, I'm definitely not cool enough to say that, but let's talk about the Copa America because we proceed into the quarterfinals. And my gosh, we have some mouthwatering games. Francis Maxwell joining you here as always filming from my homemade studio. So what it seemed to be great efforts, well, when you look at it in terms of points from both Chile and Argentina to finish top of their group, it probably means absolutely nothing going into the, fi the quarterfinal stages of the Copa America because they have drawn two of the hardest teams that they could imagine to, to draw and teams that have finished second in their groups because they haven't been as in form. And I'm talking about Colombia. Argentina will play Colombia in one of the quarterfinal matches, whilst Chile will play Uruguay. So probably four of the, the expected teams to make it into the latter stages are now going to come down to two because they play each other in the quarterfinal. So both of those games will be uh, mouthwatering, as I said, and I look forward to them. In the other groups, a, a, a quarterfinals games is Bolivia versus Peru. Two teams unexpected to get even this far are now going to play each other. So one is definitely going to make it through into the semifinals, which is just going to be phenomenal for either of them. And then in the final game, which rounds out our quarterfinal uh, appearances, is Brazil facing one of the toughest opponents, it has to be said, in the Copa America so far. Just their intensity, the way they shut teams down, the way that they, 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 they believe in themselves more than anything in Paraguay. So Brazil, without that man, Neymar, who's now suspended for the rest of the tournament and will be suspended as Brazil drop their appeal, are now going to have to look to bind together as a collective team rather than look into individual talent and you see players like Robinho who has the chance now to demonstrate that he still has it in his legs, that he still has the flair and tenacity and determination to take Brazil to where they need to be in this competition because if they exit this tournament in the quarterfinals, it's going to erupt in Brazil. They, As much as the Copa America is nowhere near the stature of the World Cup, they need to do something to regain hope for the Brazilian national team because at the moment, they, from, they went from being the dynasty that represents everything that is associated with the brilliance of football to now a team that's by far beatable and very shaky. So that is one of the games that I'm looking forward to the most to see how Brazil can try and adjust their play to play without Neymar because when you watch them play, a lot of their filtering goes through Neymar. Not like Barcelona where Neymar is found in open space. He's often given the ball in the tightest of areas and expected to do something brilliant. And he usually does conjure up those driving runs forward using his speed and ability to get by players. But now, maybe this could be a positive thing. I know it wasn't very positive in the World Cup because without him, they were devastated and they just completely got demolished by Germany. But now, in, in the last win, they looked to kind of regain some hope. You've seen the relief on their face when they won to, to, to potentially to take them through. So maybe they'll bind together. Maybe they'll play more collectively. They don't have to rely on individual talent. Maybe they'll get the ball wide into areas, start doing that counter-attacking, devastating football that we expect from Brazil. And then you might have a, a legend in his own right, like Robinho, who... Always really flattered to deceive, in my in my opinion. Maybe if he's getting a little bit older, given this opportunity, this could be his tournament. So, But one of the biggest games I'm looking forward to is Argentina versus Colombia. Argentina, yet to fire in all cylinders, I think. Lionel Messi, Sergio Aguero, wanted to see them click finally in the latter stages. And as I always talk about in these major tournaments, it's about the team who finishes strongest. It's not about the team who comes flying out the blocks. It's not about the team that picks up all the form. I talk about this a lot. Is It reminds me of the Germany of all previous World Cups apart from 2014. Previous World Cups, they would be flying, beating teams 5-0, 4-0, going into the quarterfinals, still winning, going into the semifinals, dropping a little bit often be put out in the semi-finals because they, they just peaked way too early or even in the final peaked too early and they couldn't compete with a team that's rising up. So maybe Argentina are just slowly steadying themselves. I still fancy them to beat Colombia, but you can never really rule out a team with that much talent, even though the manager finally just gave up, I guess, in the last game in Falcao. He was completely ineffective. And if you're Jose Mourinho watching these games, you must be thinking to yourself, boy, if I get my work cut out for me to try and bring him back to life because his confidence is short at the moment. His first touch is diabolical. All the little things that you expect Falcao to be still be doing but maybe just not adding the goals, he's not even doing that anymore. So that's something that has to be really worked on uh, from Jose Mourinho when he comes back to Chelsea. Uh, and in the original game, we've got Chile versus Uruguay. Uruguay changed, a lot, changed up the formation a little bit before. We've not seen Cavani be this star role that everyone seems to be telling me that he is and I'm probably guessing you're judging it based on FIFA and what he's in the French League and nothing to, don't take any, anything away from the French League but it is not for me the most competitive league in the world and I've still yet to see Edinson Cavani perform at the highest stage he had his opportunity in the World Cup when Suarez was out 
but still just kind of flattered to deceive, my favourite term. He had his opportunity in the Champions League when Zlatan Ibrahimovic was out and he had his opportunities, believe me. He had clear opportunities against Barcelona and he could not convert. So I'm waiting to see this Cavani that everyone's telling me about. I think he's got talent, don't get me wrong. I think he's even more effective when he has someone up there to play off. He, he has the pressure taken away he can provide because he is good at providing some assists. But he needs to step up in this game. If they get any chance of beating Chile at the host nation, uh, who have no problem scoring goals, but they do concede after they conceded three against what would look like Mexico's B team. So it's going to be a, a hard task for Uruguay, but I'm, I'm excited to see whether Cavani can step up and perform at this stage. And Chile, of course, I'm um, talking about them to end on it. Arturo Vidal's horrible decision-making to, to drink and take the Ferrari out and, and crash it, not only wrecking a beautiful car, but potentially wrecking his team's chances of winning the first for the Copa America for the first time ever on home soil. So he's got a lot to answer for. He is one of the tournament's most effective players at the moment. Maybe he'll use this as some form of confidence booster to, to, to push him forward to think that, OK, I now need to step up. My nation relies on me. I've tarnished my reputation. Now it's time to rebuild it. If he scores a goal that takes him through, trust me, the Chilean fans will forget all about that. But at me being quite the cynic, I'll still remember what happens in his, and his decision makings. But it's still good to see the best players out there on the field. So that for me is a game to look out for because Chile have been attacking so well, but conceding as well as at the back. And I think Uruguay could definitely exploit that. So it's going to be exciting to watch that. All games are happening this Wednesday. Make sure to stay tuned to recaps. We will be in New York, so I'll be in a different uh, surroundings than this, but make sure to stay tuned to our coverage. Follow me on Twitter at Francis underscore Maxo and hit me up uh, on Twitter. Let me know what you guys think of the Copa America. DYP Sports, subscribe.